to open the gate. Uh, it's another week. We're back to Paris. It's almost the end of the third season, and my dear guest this week is Eric de Clark. Hi, Eric. How are you? So far, so flawless. So flawless. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Paris. You're here for Fashion Week. I didn't even know it was Fashion Week. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, I it, it was, is. I was here Men's Fashion Week a few, like, January? Yeah, yeah, it was in January. January. That was so stressful. <laughs> oh, so well, stressful. women is even worse. Because yeah, but at least it's more rewarding. Yes, it is. You know, with the guys, I'm sorry. It's just like, they all look like they're about 12 years old. They're too tall. They don't have any facial expressions. Well, it looks like same maybe on a girl, but less on a boy. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> because it's the same age system. You that's know? true. That's true. But we're not here to talk about fashion. Thanks God. We're here to we talk about fashion. We are fashion. We don't need to yeah. talk about it. We're just living it. Fashion is, sorry. Fashion oh. is validated by us. <laughs> <laughs> now we're here to talk about the music and your music. Okay. You're here to mix in Paris. Tomorrow night at Shemoon. At Shemoon. It's a very cool, very old lesbian club. I remember when yeah. it was a lesbian club. I yeah. always I always love the wallpaper, black velvet so wallpaper good. with it's the little cool. naked yeah. bodies on it. I was like, yes. It's a very cool club in Montmartre. Mm -hmm. I really like it, so it's good for you that you can I'm looking here. forward to it. And I'm playing with David Duke Oh, yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah. he used to be in the band Sex in Dallas, mm -hmm. and they're all old friends of mine too. Excellent. And so I'm happy, happy. So the all America is there. Mm -hmm. You're from California? Yes. And now you're based in Germany, in Berlin. No, I just have an atelier in Berlin. Okay. I don't really base myself there. I don't socialize there. Okay. I have a very, I have a very, very close knit group of friends, mm -hmm. but I don't, ex I don't extend it. Okay. You know, because the thing about Berlin is, when I took my first apartment there, I only moved there because, okay, I started my corporation, my company my label, mm -hmm. in Ber uh, in Germany. And I said to my business partner, I want to have an apartment that's big enough so I can roller skate at home. Because <laughs> I have these amazing roller skates, but I can't use them on the street because they have special wheels. Uh -huh. So we found a 152 square meter apartment nice. with no walls. And I, is perfect. and I was able to skate for six years in my home. And that's all I did. Okay, that's why I you have very muscle legs now. <laughs> Me and Whitney Houston, I think. Well, mine are more muscular than hers at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, Excellent. it's the aesthetic factor. It's the aesthetic. So when you started your uh, big uh, music wave, uh, you had a big, you had some hits and some music made you quite famous in the world. Yes. Uh, we all danced on disco to disco. I love it. <laughs> I still love that song. You know, I'm one of those people. A lot of people say, "Oh, I'm so tired of that hit." You know, they make a hit and they're like, they're, I don't know, not me. I love everything I've done, honey. <laughs> every single track, every goddamn note, all of it, to this day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people surprise me. I'll go maybe at a bar or something or a friend's house and they'll be playing something for me that's like almost 20 years old. Yeah. I don't even have it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And I'm listening. It sounds so familiar. It's you, Eric. It's you. And I'm like, oh my oh, God, God, I forgot. You know, it's really bad, but, you know, as an artist, I think a lot of artists, no matter what the medium is, you realize that once you've finished a thing, it is done. You don't think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. It just moves on. How do you feel when a kid remix your uh, old stuff? You mean like does an edit or something mm -hmm. like that? Most of them don't do it. They, yeah. don't, they don't mess with my music. They're afraid of me for some reason. Uh, yeah. yeah, because a lot of my stuff doesn't really... It was all done before... Like, the stuff that most people know yeah. was all done before the internet really mm. took off and everything. So, like, the, the Whirlpool Productions stuff, the four albums that we did together, they are nowhere online. Mm -hmm. You can't just go. You can you can buy them from Discogs and get a CD or the vinyl, yeah. but you can't download them. They're not. Ils ont pas téléchargé quelque part. Okay. J'adore ça. <laughs> J'adore because it means that you know not everything you need to find out you can find out on Google search, honey. Mm -hmm. You know some of us are a little bit beyond. <laughs> and I like being beyond. <laughs> no, that fits you very well, being I beyond. Think, I think it's fun. You are beyond. I feel it, I feel that, yes. Cool. Eric, how did it uh, grow and evolve, all your music and all your projects? Because now you talk about things that happened like 20 years ago, but what is Eric today and what have you been doing like the past few years? 
Well, mixing I, around the world, I guess, of course. Yeah, but I don't DJ as much anymore. It's not that I don't want to. It's just that um, I guess that maybe what I play doesn't always fit. Like, I'll get one week to play a disco set, like mm -hmm. only disco. And that's great, but the last time I did it, they wanted vinyl. So, I was in Cologne, I brought all this disco vinyl. And if you ask me disco, it's not gonna be ABBA and Donna Summer and, you know, I'm talking about, for me, disco stops at about 1978, mm -hmm. 79. Anything after that is just dance music. Yeah. Eric, you've been dealing with music and now you have a few new projects and someone is asking you to be an art teacher. Oh! How does it go to work with, well, the, with your actually, I Actually, I was asked to do the Stadel School for Visual Arts yeah. and they asked me to give a lecture. Mm -hmm. So I gave the lecture and I was talking about marketing of music and this was, this was what, five or six years ago and that's when it started. And I ended up using um, like promotional material that I get because I'm a DJ, right? So mm -hmm. I have all these like box sets. And the, Bjork does amazing special releases. Mm -hmm. She had like for every single off of whatever the album was called, I can't keep up with her. <laughs> But every single came as a, it was like a little book. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of thick. And I'm thinking, why is it so thick? Because it's got two records inside, and you take the record out and in paper, which is normal, but then you take out one part of the cover and it keeps going until the cover was this tall and she was standing next to you in your room. I was like, how the hell? Wow. And it was three or four of those. And I took them to the lecture and then they showed them the Portis Head box set, which was also very signature. And You know, I said that, you know, marketing, what you do with music when you market is that you just want to get people's attention. You mm -hmm. don't even really want to move the product. Yeah, that's right. You know, you want to get their attention so that when you yeah, do... she does so, both, no? And she can do both. Yeah. She's the only person made a song, G oh, and the Venus as a Child. Yeah. There's no reason I should have been a number one pop record. Because mm -hmm. you can't sing along with her. You know. It's fabulous. I love that. She really puts it, she pushes the envelope and makes people think. And the link with being an art teacher is? I ended up singing most of the lecture. <laughs> and then they asked me if I would like to be a member of the, of the faculty. <laughs> Excellent. And I, then, and I said, yes, what do you want me to teach? And yeah, said, what are you going to teach? And they said, well, you decide. It's your course. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, okay. So first of all, I call all my friends who do music and I ask them, would you ever be a teacher in an art school? And everybody said no. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm doing it. And they said, what's the name of the course? Or what's the course outline? I said, the course is a course on creative fruition. Okay. Because so many artists I know in various mediums of work, they don't know how to finish a thing. They get, well, they get to a level that's and good. then they stop. And then I just said, but anywhere you stop along the way, if you decide to put it out to the public, they don't know what's in your mind anyway. And which school is this? The Stadel Schule für Bildniskunst in Frankfurt. In Frankfurt. Okay. Yeah, it's the, um, the school that gave us Martin Kippenberger um, on the staff when I was there. Wolfgang Tillmans was also on the staff, and uh, Judith Hopf, uh, Matthias Rehberger. Um, okay. It was a very good staff, very good. It was great. It was very. I was so honored. Also, I saw something about you with some work that will be into your work. Someone that used to work for Fassbinder. I don't really remember. Yes. Well, I did a music video with Klaus Linke for yeah. Mouse on Mars. Okay. A song that we did together years ago, and then he just did a video in winter last year. Yeah. And we met, and we were talking, and um, I've never met him before, but I, I have a lot of respect for him. He's kind of like the unofficial godfather of the dogma film movement. Okay, yeah. And, I mean, he hates that, but And you're he gonna doesn't... And you're going to be into his kind of project? He, he said that he, after listening to me speak, he said, you should make a documentary. No, I should make a documentary about you. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay. That's really good. Just so fucking big honor. I mean, black dude moves to Germany mm -hmm. and is up getting like, the Germanist of German film producers to make a documentary about mm -hmm. him. 
What am I going to do next? Politics? Yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> that was my next and final question. <laughs> What's coming next? What have you in your mind? What are you going to do now? Is there like new music coming up? Or? Well, the next album is ready. Yeah. It's being they're working on all the artwork and all the promo photos and videos and stuff like that. That's all being done right now. Okay. But um, there's actually releases. Some things are released already, but I keep it real low key. Okay. Just to put it out there, because I don't really send promos. Mm -hmm. And so, at any rate, yeah, it's going to be that next album. Then um, autobiography I'm writing right now. Okay. And yourself? You want yeah. to tell it yourself? I'm writing it myself, but I'm actually asking people who have Bad known stuff, yeah. add things because I figure if I'm writing an autobiography, I have to be able to read it. And I can't read it if I wrote it all. Uh -uh. I'll be bored shitless. <laughs> so I need other people to put some input in. And so far I've gotten some great stories. Even from a friend of mine's mother who we used to take piano lessons together in Sacramento. And she wrote me a really gorgeous story I completely forgot. Oh, cute. It's so lovely. I've been getting, and you know what else? When they send that stuff, it inspires me to write the piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also. So to whether or not their blurbs get put in the book, not really important. Well, we'll be promoting it and reading it, I guess. I hope. Send me a copy, please. Yes, of course. We're going to course. finish this interview with one last question. I see a crystal hanging behind your collar. What yes. is this for? It's beautiful. It was given, it was, this is the first crystal I've ever owned. Yeah. And it was given to me by Alex IQ from the band, the IQ. Mm -hmm. And I'm working with them on their second album right okay. now here in Paris. And we've, we became very close. He, I met him at my house in Lisbon years ago with his then boyfriend. And then um, we, they're not together now for, I don't know, two years, two years or so. But he and I are very close. And he gave me that. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm very, I love it. I never had a crystal. I thought, oh, so esoteric and so, yeah. you know, Birkenstocks and incense. Exactly. You know? But at the same time, so fuck it. What do I care for? Look at the rest it of shines. It. <laughs> it shines, exactly. It treats you very well. I'm like a magpie. It shines, I take it. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for asking you so all our much. stupid questions. They were not stupid. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> and you're you. gorgeous. You're just lovely. So regal. <laughs> Look at that. Mm. Good luck for tomorrow night. For you're uh, coming, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, fabulous. <laughs> Put me on the guest list. Yes, you, I think we're going to do another password. Yeah? I like to make passwords. Crystal. No, no, no. We did, the last password was um, aquatic ape theory. Okay. Because it really is a thing, talking about why we walk upright, it's because we were wading through water, looking Good for Good to know if one day you're coming to one of his parties, if he's mixing, just give some weird password, it feels might. It might work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Welcome too. in Paris, enjoy, have fun. Yes. And see you around. Yes, indeedy. <laughs> thank you for watching Open the Gates. Follow us on every Friday, 9 p.m. on souvenirsfromearth.tv. Thank you and bye-bye.